Well, it finally happened. The Dallas Mavericks put forth a complete game Friday night in pretty much a wire-to-wire demolishing of the Spurs. I know the 123-109 final might not necessarily signal the kind of ass-kicking this was, but Dallas firmly controlled this game throughout. And surprising to should be no one at this point, the reason is because their two superstars played like two superstars. Luka had his best game of the year after a slow start. There are still some concerns with certain things, but at the same time, if Porzingis is going to go off, and I mean go off like 23-7 and seven at the half, you're going to be in really good shape. And KP knocked down some deep, deep daggers, including a heave from just over half court as, uh, as the half signaled, banked it in, and it's just a thing of beauty. KP is active as ever on defense. I think he had three blocks as well. Tremendous effort from Dallas here. Their shooters knocked down threes. KP was feeling it as good and confident as I've seen him play this year. And Luka finally broke out of the little bit of a lull he's been in to start this season. So, you know, it, it's one thing. It's one thing if the team wins a game. They're, what, 9-4 and four at this point. And they're sitting well. So they've done a pretty good job there. But the problem has been when they have faced quality teams, teams that are going to be playoff contenders, teams that have a better pedigree ahead of them. Now, to be fair, the Spurs are still one of those lottery teams, not just last year, but this year as well. But you got to at least take that step forward and say, you know, you can only play the team that's there in front of you. And if it's a lesser team, all you can do and all you should do is kick their ass, which Dallas did. Dallas in this game, complete effort, led every quarter of the way. 31-22 after the first. Both teams opened up the game shooting well from three. The difference was that the Mavericks did a better job taking care of the ball. Luka knocked down a couple threes and his free throws. Free throws, again, continue to be a little bit shaky. But uh, this was a big, big push here. Dallas ended the quarter on a 20-6 run. That's where this game was firmly taken in control. And Dallas never looked back. Luka had 10 at the end of one. KP, 6. So it's not like KP was a house of cards. House of cards? House of fire right out of the gate, but he certainly got going. Uh, Jalen Brunson in the midst of all that um, was, was a real igniter off the bench for them. Dallas sparked a 10-0 run as soon as he checked into the game. So it made for a really interesting, pretty much as complete a picture as we've seen of this team this year. Now, KP in this game started out 8 of 12 from the field and he was blocking shots. So it's not just that KP was scoring, it's that he was scoring at will. So at the half, Dallas has a 68 57 advantage. KP, again, I said 23 and 7 earlier, it was actually 23 and 6. Luca, meanwhile, already flirting with a triple double, which, by the way, in this game was his first triple double of the season, his 37th for his career. But at half, Luca had 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists. Now, Dallas was playing heavy minutes for these guys early on like at the half Luca already had 30 minutes KP had 28 minutes the minutes restriction was not a similar theme the fact that you're nine and four and sitting where you are in the west yes things are getting more difficult but the fact that you're here now is great because you haven't had a whole lot really working in your favor offensively and now you're trying to get through it to endure those harsher waters to come uh, other call outs in this game Hardaway had a little bit of a scare, uh, limping pretty heavily. He did come back, but he wasn't needed for a big dose here. And so with Hardaway, you end up getting... Now, he plays 31 minutes, so I say that. He didn't shoot the ball well. Two of 11, just 5.6 rebounds. But he still got a lot more minutes in the second half, actually, than I anticipated. KP was 9 of 13 from the field in the first half, including 3 of 4 from 3 again. Pretty much back-to-back threes. He hits a logo three... Spurs come back the other way and get a bucket with a couple seconds left. And then Luca flips it to KP at half court and KP banks in another one before the half. Just an absolute gut punch for the Spurs. Uh, That really kind of signaled there that it was just going to be one of those nights. Everything was rolling for Dallas. And even when the Spurs got a nice basket before the half, Dallas not only takes it back, they add a little bit of a little bit of uh, interest on that payment, if you will. 
Another common thing that we've seen with Porzingis, and we've talked about it at times, he plays his best, and it's amazing that he's in his third full season playing with the Mavericks, and this just hasn't really been determined until now. He plays at his best when he is the lone big on the floor. You put him and Powell out there, the spacing is crap. You put him out there, even with Maxi or someone like that, it's suspect. You know, Maxi plays mostly outside anyway, but it, it, you need KP to be your one big on the floor. When he was tearing it up in his first full season playing with the Mavericks and then in the bubble, it was because of that scenario. So going back to this and the fact that it has immediately unlocked KP's offensive potential should signal something to Dallas. And I'm really hoping with a new offensive kind of game planner here in uh, Igor and with the new regime in general with Jason Kidd, we're more willing to run with this because if you're going to get something out of KP, it has to be this. You've tried every other combination. That's not going to work. You need to stick to what works. So in that 68 points Dallas had in the first half, 39 came from Luka and KP. Again, that's the kind of heavy lifting you want your two best players to do. And Jalen Brunson, I haven't even really mentioned him yet. I mentioned him coming in earlier and still helping spark a 10-0 run. Brunson had 17 points off the bench as well. We'll get into him with some interesting stats here. But KP, and this is actually from uh, Harlebo, uh, this is actually from Bob Volgaris on Twitter. Yes, that Bob Volgaris. Says uh, Mav scored in Friday night's game 1.33 points per possession that half with KP as the lone big on the floor. That's an obscenely efficient number. Now, is that a small sample size? Absolutely, it's a single half. But it just shows how they went to that well, and it was very, very kind to them. And they would be wise to consider it more often. Dallas also shared the ball very well in this game. 17 assists on their first 22 field goals. That stat comes from Kevin Gray Jr. Um, great context there to just how well this thing was rolling. It wasn't just, it wasn't just KP showing out. It wasn't just Luka playing more like himself and being a triple-double threat every single game, which once he gets back to that point, then uh, this thing will really kick into gear and you won't have a bottom five or seven offense, whatever the hell it is. You'll have a much better offense. But it wasn't just those two aspects. It was the whole team operating like a well-oiled machine. After three quarters, Dallas led 102 to 77. So they gave up 20 points, but they continued to blow off the barn doors, going from 68 to 102 in a single frame. Pretty impressive there. Dallas in that, it was more about the defense, right? Because as Bob Bobby Corella points out on Twitter, the Mavericks in that quarter recorded five steals, two blocks, limited the Spurs to 20 points, as I said, and the Mavericks through three quarters had made 15 three-pointers. That was their second most in a game all season, and that was before we even got to the fourth quarter. So yeah, a lot was working. It was nice to have a game for the Mavericks where you didn't have to be tense, even if it was against a bad team. You got to actually just kind of say like, oh, okay. Here's another trend for you. The Mavericks have not recorded back-to-back -back losses this year. Yes, they lost in Chicago to the Bulls. The Bulls are a good-looking team. But Dallas did not have any issues there. One thing to take note of, you did have uh, Vucevic after the game immediately the next day go into health and safety protocols. And it sounds like he's got a positive uh, test, which complicates things because after the game, even with the Mavericks and Bulls, you had several Maverick players uh, in close contact with him, not just playing against him in the game itself, but, you know, talking with them, hugging with them, all that kind of thing. So... Something to watch there. Although, if we've gotten this far out, maybe it's okay. You usually got about a three to four day window from what I understand. Uh, again, here's a stat from Kevin Gray Jr. I mentioned that it was Luka Doncic's 37th career triple-double. He's 22. Some extra context to that. Most triple-doubles uh, before, or most 20... Let me repeat this. Some extra context to Kevin Gray Jr.'s stat. This also went up during the MAPS broadcast. Most triple doubles age 22 and younger all time. The leader is Oscar Robertson with 38. Luca has 37. Magic Johnson had 31. Ben Simmons, 22. And LeBron James, 14. Luca is 11th, 11th most all time on triple double list. 22. 
Now, Russell Westbrook has pushed that record out there obscenely far, and obviously Robertson Big O did it before as well. But uh, yeah, that's some serious, serious context there. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Anything else I want to highlight from this game? So for the game, Luka ended up with 32, 14, and 12. KP, 32 and 7. So only one board after the half, I guess you could say, is a little bit of a complaint. But considering KP barely played any at all in the second half, and same for Luka. Luka played six minutes. It looks like KP played about six as well in that third quarter. Didn't really matter, but a very, very productive outing from the Mavericks. They are now 3-0 and against the Spurs this year. Why is that interesting? The Mavericks have never in their history swept the San Antonio Spurs in a season matchup. Now, they got to wait a while before they could potentially make that official. They don't play the Spurs again until game 82, literally the last game of the regular season. But they have an opportunity to do something they have never done in their history before. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Speaks a lot to how good the Spurs have historically been throughout this. Granted, the Mavericks came into being in the 80 in, in 80. So, yeah, the Spurs pretty much through most of the 90s and uh, obviously up until just the last couple of years have been pretty much uh, a rolling contender at the very least in the top 10 roughly of the NBA, if not the top two or three. So that's uh, that's saying quite a bit. Jalen Brunson, this is from Mavs PR on Twitter, had 17 points on the game. It's his six consecutive games scoring in double figures. He is now averaging 19.2 points, 56% from the field, five rebounds and four and a half cents per game in the month of November. So Brunson has been cooking. Doesn't matter if they've had him coming off the bench or starting in the lineup. He has been legitimately good this year and uh, really really uh, probably one of the most integral Mavericks in this early stretch of the season. Let me see any other things to point out. This is from Jake Kemp on Twitter. He says the Mavericks averaged the fewest passes per game this season coming in against the Spurs. They had 305 passes, which would have ranked fifth in the league. And uh, it was their third highest shot quality of the season. Another stat where they've been bottom 10 for the first 10 games of the year. Yeah. Moving the ball, not just letting it stick in Luca's hand or whoever is running the offense at the time. If Luca's is not in moving the ball and generating good looks, you know, the stuff we did the couple of years prior, the more, you know, but yeah, it was a good night for the Mavericks. And uh, if you're looking for anything else on the periphery to be interested in, you did have Josh Green and Moses Brown move down to the delegated to the Texas Legends for a game. I stress a game. They've both already been recalled back to the main roster. And, you know, Moses Brown showed up with the Legends, had a quiet little game, 23 points, 16 boards, three blocks, 10 of 14 from the field, two of three from the free throw line. You know, nothing much. Moses Brown needs to get some more opportunities. I, I understand the limitations, but I think you need to find some way to get him some minutes here up in these next uh, few games, potentially. The guy's got a little something, and you're not going to get him any more prepared playing him in the G League. I, don't, I just don't think you are. I think at this point, he's going to be a monster and dominate there anytime he's there. And other than just trying to keep him in game shape because you're not playing him in the regular season a whole lot here, you're not going to get the benefit there. You might as well let him cut his teeth a little bit on actual NBA action because it's not like he's never done it. That stretch run he had with the Thunder, he played, he appeared in, I think, 46 games overall, started about 20-something of them. I don't remember the stat off the top of my head anymore. It's been a while since I wrote that initial profile piece when he was acquired. But, yeah, you need to just give him the chance to learn in-game a little bit and to work with uh, with Luca and with the rest of these guys. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!